It's an honor <laughs> to be here. Uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about why the geologist who sees the most rocks wins. And I have eight minutes to try to convince you why all Earth scientists and really everyone should study rock. So the quote that inspired the title of my presentation was said by Herbert Harold Reed, who was a British geologist and he died in the 70s. Uh, and so here you can kind of see he's leaning against a rock. And here, presumably, um, shaving in the field. They're really um, the only photos I could find of this. Uh, and so the way I interpret his quote is I think about the world and how the world is so complex geologically. You can see a world, a mm -hmm. picture of the geology of the world. Um, and so if that doesn't make it hard enough for geologists, so the geology isn't equally distributed in the world. And so this arrow over here is pointing to where I've had the honor of studying geology for the past four years mm -hmm. in southern Wisconsin at the Lloyd College. And so although at um, Beloit College we have the opportunity to go on a lot of field excursions and to travel various places throughout the U.S. to uh, look at the rocks, <laughs> um, uh, as you can see, it's only a tiny fraction of the world's geology. And so any opportunity that you can get to travel somewhere new and gain a new perspective can make you a better geologist. So a simple example of this that comes to mind is driving. And so I'm sure um, a lot of you could relate to the even if you have your license. And so uh, I remember I had to take a course um, about driving before I actually got to sit behind the wheel of the car. Um, and although that was really important to take that course, I think when I finally got to uh, be the one operating the car and physically sitting behind the wheel, I really, um, the learning experience couldn't replace how much I learned there. Uh, so it's a very different example, but I think it's the same principle that the classroom can't replace the experience. Uh, and so this is where I study. Um, small slide, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so I studied in Songdal, um, and it's located in southwestern Norway. I studied the Songdal Fjord in University College. And as you can see, it's located on the longest and deepest fjord in Norway, um, mm -hmm. some of the largest waterfalls. And so I had an image in here um, that showed a typical um, uh, a typical uh, geology field trip we'd be go on in Wisconsin. And that excursion would um, uh, we'd be we would go to a stream maybe and take some discharge measurements. And so the picture I was going to show um, uh, showed um, how it's a very flat terrain, and that's a typical type of excursion we could go on in Wisconsin. Um, oh, it's here. <laughs> so here it is. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, there it is. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty flat terrain. And then this is where I studied in Norway. Wow. Um, and so as you can see, the landscape is entirely different. And although I love Wisconsin, pretty flat, which is quite uninteresting for geologists. <laughs> so I studied right in the middle of this valley um, in Songdo. And uh, as you can see, there are really interesting dynamics going on with the large mountains and with the um, fjord that was a mixture of uh, fresh and salt water. Um, and it made for such interesting weather interactions. And I, could, I thought it was really crazy how I could start a hike in shorts and a t-shirt at the bottom of a mountain. And then um, at the time I am at the top, I'd be like a foot or two of snow. And so this environment was just a natural laboratory in itself. And this is a better depiction of what it looked like most of the majority of the time that I was there. It was pretty cold, but it didn't stay cold forever. So here the bottom photo is uh, uh, kind of like a now and then. So the bottom one is I took in the winter, and the top one I took in the spring. And you can see the snow line <coughs> has uh, receded. And here's another now and then. This one taken away, you can see there's ice on the fjord. And over there, you can see everything's kind of green and sunny, and the sun never really set. So I studied at Hope School, which is a similar sized um, campus to Beloit, about 2,000 students. Um, the classes were also similar sized, and I took um, some classes with um, um, the majority of them were Norwegians, but some internationals, and I took climate change, geohousing, engineering, geology, and early warning, and I went on some field excursions. So as you can kind of tell from the title of the courses that I took, um, the thing I found very interesting about studying in Norway was that what I studied was a direct reflection of what Norwegians found very important to them. And so Norwegians, they really love mountains, and they are bored with skis on their feet. And uh, so they're really, they're really concerned about things like uh, climate change and uh, global warming and their glaciers ablating. Um, and they live in these uh, valleys surrounded by these very tall mountains. And so landslides are things that are of a great concern in snow avalanches. And so in my geohazards class, we took a, a week um, to go uh, do a field excursion, do some research, and we traveled to uh, Lada, which is a city known for some of the most landslides in Norway. And so what we tried to do was we tried to map the landslide deposits. And so uh, here you can see 
our, we try to, with the red lines is kind of the work we do. We try to outline where the rocks and, and debris would fall from the top of these mountains. We try to outline them throughout the area. And we try to predict how far into the valleys these rocks or debris flows would uh, the extent of them. And so we even uh, interviewed some locals and asked them, you know, how many rocks are in your backyard? When was the last uh, landslide you saw? What was the frequency of this event? And also how secure do you feel living living here? Do you Are you worried that you're going to, um, while you're sleeping, a rock is going to roll into your home? And so a lot of them, this picture I didn't take, but a lot of them would do something like this where they build their homes into the hill slopes to protect them from these kind of uh, And so while well, I was abroad, I got the opportunity in the springtime when there wasn't too much snow on the mountain <laughs> to travel up to the top and get to explore the terrain. Uh, and so um, this was especially cool for me because growing up on the East Coast, I've had the opportunity to um, explore the Appalachian Mountains. And the Norwegian Mountains were created during the same geologic event that created the um, Appalachian Mountains. And so uh, they're mirror images. And so being able to see the European side of these mountains kind of completed a puzzle piece for me. Just some more snow. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a typical uh, textbook figure you might see in an intro geology or earth science class. And, uh, so what it's trying to show is that as more air rises, it uh, cools and condenses and falls as precipitation. And so this is a typical figure that I had seen many times before, and I had a, a general understanding of it. It made perfect sense. And, um, I remember one day in one of my classes, my Norwegian professor showed a similar image like this up on the board. And um, I was like, okay, I understand this. And suddenly I look out the window and I see this. Um, and for my own eyes, I finally got to see it. And being able to, to do that uh, really solidified it in a way that learning it um, in the classroom never really did for me, even though I thought I had a good understanding of it. Um, and so there are so many examples of things like that happening to me while I was studying there. Um, so I went on a lot of hikes in Norway, and what I thought was really cool, um, Eolin is deep, which is easy for me to interpret as geologist hike, um, but what was really cool about the hikes that I went on is they were, it was just you and the nature, um, and uh, um, a lot of times it, they weren't many, there weren't many markers, and there weren't many people, and occasionally I'd see a Norwegian uh, running up a mountain while I was walking and trying to gasp for, for air. And, um, so this particular hike was a bit more populated. It's a, a bigger tourist attraction. Um, and despite the fact of being a huge tourist attraction and um, a dangerous hike for a lot of people because this cliff, um, the Pulpit Rock, also known as Prickus Moon, um, is about a 600 meter drop or 2,000 feet. Um, and people have been injured by this hike. Uh, the Norwegian people decided they didn't want to build a, fa a fence around it and because they thought it would destroy the natural aspect of it. And that's something I'm not used to seeing in the States that I really appreciate. Uh, so this is a man kind of peering carefully <laughs> over the edge to <laughs> scare me. So people just casually sitting in the fractures of the rock. Um, and of course the view down the pier is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and so the last part of um, uh, this project that I guess that I'm trying to put together is I took a bunch of interviews of um, some of my friends and professors who had been abroad and what perspective they thought they had gained um, studying in the sciences. Um, and so I don't have time to share all of them with you, so I'll just share one. This is my friend Rick Vaughn, who studied last spring in Australia. And I asked him what perspective he felt he gained having studied in Australia. And he said, when I study environmental science in the Midwest, I learn a lot about environmental issues that occur in the U.S. In general, geology has bias. Abroad, I got a taste of the Australian bias education. And so what's important to Australia is mining, so he learned a lot about mining in Australia. And so what I guess I want to stress is, this um, experience wasn't unique to me. Um, and anywhere you could go, you can gain perspective. Um, and also, as all of you guys know too, it's not only um, it's not only um, uh, earth science that you can gain a better perspective, and it's anything that you are studying. Um, and so, I know having gone to geology, uh, going having gone to Norway, I feel like a much more confident geologist, having seen more rocks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.